Consider the reaction between S2-chloropentane with methanol. What are the major products for this reaction? Now what we have here is a secondary alkyl halide with a polar protic solvent, methanol, and so this is going to favor the SN1 reaction. Now in the SN1 reaction, you're going to get a racemic mixture. The end result is that we're going to get an ether. So we're going to replace the chlorine atom with the OCH3 group. The hydrogen is going to leave. So we're going to get both the retention product and also the inverted product. So this is the retention product because we could see that it retained the stereochemistry at the chiral center. And this is the inverted product. So here the configuration at the chiral center is S. It's S here as well, but here it's R. So that's why this is the inverted product. Now, in an SO1 reaction, we typically don't get an equal amount of the retention product and the inverted product. We get an unequal racemic mixture. So the retention product, we might get 40% of it, and the inverted product, we might get 60%. In some cases, it may be 30-70 instead of 40-60. But nevertheless, we do observe that it's an unequal racemic mixture. We get more of the inverted product than the retention product. But the question is why? Why do we get more of the inverted product than the retention product? The answer has to do with something called the intimate ion pair. Now let's talk about the mechanism for this reaction. In the first step, the leaving group is going to leave. And we're going to get a carbocation a carbon with a positive charge. Now when the leaving group leaves, usually it's not very far away from the carbocation. So even though they've broken apart, the chloride is likely relatively close to the carbocation. Now the solvent methanol could solve a chloride and move it away from the carbocation, but a lot of times they're pretty close. And in this situation, when these two oppositely charged ions are close to each other, that's what is known as the intimate ion pair. Keyword intimate, that means they're very close to each other. We ha and we also have a pair of ions. This is one ion, that's two, two makes a pair. So that is the intimate ion pair. Now, methanol which is the solvent, is going to behave as a nucleophile. So this is going to be a solvolysis reaction. The solvent could approach the carbocation from the back, which will give us the inverted product, or it could try to get to the carbocation from the front, which will give us the retention product. In this situation, is it easier for the nucleophile to approach the carbocation from the front or from the back? What would you say? If it tries to approach from the front, notice that it's going to be repelled by the chloride. The chloride ion has a negative charge, and the oxygen of methanol, which is the nucleophilic part of methanol, that has a partial negative charge, so those two are going to repel. So it's going to be harder for methanol to approach from the front. If it approached the carbocation from the back, there's no problem with that because the chloride is not in the way. And that's why we get more of the inverted product than the retention product. It's because of the intimate ion pair. The nucleophile can easily approach from the back because the chloride ion is not in its way. But as it tries to approach from the front, it's going to be repelled by the chloride ion, giving us less of the retention product and more of the inverted product. So that's the basic idea behind the intimate ion pair. Now, if we were to slow down the reaction and allow more time for the chloride to be fully dissociated into the solvent, let's say if the solvent, if the chloride were to move away in the solution, 
then Messina would be free to attack from either side and we would get closer to a 50-50 mixture as opposed to a 30-70 or 40-60 mixture. But it all depends on the proximity of the chloride to the carbocation. The closer these two are, the more likely we're going to get an unequal racemic mixture. Now for those of you who are interested in downloading that practice test, here's how you can do it. So if you go to patreon.com slash math science tutor, it'll take you to my Patreon membership page. Now to really, to get this particular worksheet, you need the level four membership. This is where I have my worksheets for final exams and practice tests. Once you sign in, you'll see something that looks like this. And if you go to organic chemistry posts, you're going to get access to the extended versions of my organic chemistry videos. You've seen the free versions, which could be for a typical video, like 20 minutes long. The full versions could be an hour or two hours long. Some are even like four hours long. But you could find the links to the, the direct link to the extended version of my YouTube videos in the description section of the referring video on YouTube. So if you're taking um, your second exam, and if you're studying SN1, SN2, E1, E2 reactions, I recommend viewing this one. I think the free version is like 30 minutes long on YouTube, somewhere around there. The full version is an hour and a half long. This will give you a good overview of SN1, SN2 reactions. But here's the practice test that you can download. It has 77 test questions, and <laughs> I've put as many variations of problems that you might find on a typical exam for this topic in this particular document. Now this is the video that has all of these questions but has the answers as well. But for those of you who prefer to get a printout and maybe work on this while you're at school or something, you can check this out when you get a chance. So you need the level 4 membership to get this document but the level 3 membership to access this video. So feel free to take a look at that when you have a moment.